My name is Peter, and this is Pete's Guide to Doing Everything Better. This is version 1.3 of Dear Trevor Jacob. Were you trimmed for a dive? So let's talk about a cousin of the Taylorcraft BL65. This is a Taylorcraft L2, a World War II uh, forward reconnaissance aircraft built by Taylorcraft based uh, roughly on the Taylorcraft Model B. And uh, the arrangement was changed from side-by-side -side seating to tandem seating. And the reason I'm showing this photo is because I found the pilot's manual for this airplane on the Taylorcraft.org website. And when I looked at the emergency instructions for crew exit, I found the following. I'll read the last three sentences here. The airplane, if controllable, should be trimmed nose heavy and slowed down to a complete stall. Occupants should jump before the airplane makes its dive, which follows the stall. Dive headlong past the rear of the lift struts and as far away from the airplane as possible and use parachute in conventional manner. So let's unpack that. Let's talk about the elevator trim first. In this particular model of Taylorcraft, the elevator trim is this simple lever underneath the pilot seat. The trim lever activates this little flipper, as Taylorcraft pilots call them, below the horizontal stabilizer. Here it is in the neutral position. Here's the elevator trim in the nose up position. Here's the elevator trim in the nose down position. Okay, now that we know what it looks like, let's find it on the plane. Here's Trevor just before he bells out and the wing mounted camera has swung in the wind so that we can see the tail. Still not the tail number, but we can see the tail wheel and that is the area that we're interested in. Okay, now we're zoomed in and see that line between the tail wheel and the control cable for the uh, rudder? That's the flipper. And we can't really see the full size of it because the camera is pointing at it pretty much directly edge on. But since the camera is mounted at the top of the lift strut, close to the underside of the wing, um, it's actually looking down. So I believe that makes this flapper flipper. Uh, I believe that verifies that this flipper is set to nose down trim. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. So I think that leaves two more items from the L2 emergency bailout checklist we need to look at. First, dive headlong past the rear lift strut. I think that's a check. Okay, let's look at the last item in the bailout checklist. Get as far away from the plane as possible and then use your parachute. I think that's a uh, sufficient distance, but wait. What's that lump in his jacket? I'm beginning to think uh, a lot of you on the net are right. I think he stuffed the gallon water jug in his jacket. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I'm getting there. And here are all of my earlier updates, including the water bottle, which now I'm starting to think looks like the shape we just saw under his jacket. Apologies in advance for the uh, multiple mixed levels of audio. This is what Trevor Jacobs' plane looked like in March of 2016, a bunch of years before he bought it. This is what Trevor Jacobs' plane looked like on November 24th, 2021, after he was done flying it. Let's decode the tail number. November is the nationality designation for all aircraft registered in the United States. C is the category symbol, which is no longer used in the registration database. Uh, so NC means standard registration, and L would have been uh, limited registration, and R would have been restricted registration, 
and NX would have been experimental registration. And so the full tail number, as it is in the modern databases, uh, current FAA database specifically, is November 29508. Okay, now that we've decoded the tail number, we can uh, look up the aircraft registration and get all the cool details. Turns out the plane is a 1940 Taylor Craft BL-65, serial number 2351. That translates as Taylor Craft Model B with a lug homing 65 horsepower engine. Here's the tail number circled in the crashed plane. Let's zoom in on the tail number on the crashed plane. November Charlie 29508. Yep, same plane. So Trevor, tell me about the rust on your left strut. Did you know about this airworthiness directive? This requires inspection every 48 months. And if you don't do that, and the rust degrades the lift strut, your wings might fall off. That's happened before to this plane, this model plane. And it's kind of expensive to fix because you can't repair them. You have to replace them. So that's at least three grand by the FAA's estimates. Did you make that money off this video? And this is a light combing engine according to the aircraft's registration. Here's a hole in the cowling. What's that black line going from the hole in the cowling to the opening for the cylinders? Could it be a bungee cord? It doesn't look like a crack. If it's a bungee cord, what is it holding in place? On January 9th, Shaw Bear 1000 posted a video pointing out that the engine in Trevor's flight appears to be different from the one seen in the 2016 video of the same plane. The new engine appears to be a Continental, and the valve covers appear to have been freshly painted, red, with noticeable overspray. The engine swap is obvious once you know what to look for. On the light coming, both spark plugs for each cylinder are mounted on the top, while on the new engine, one is mounted on the top and one is mounted on the bottom of each cylinder. I've also noticed that the opening in the cowling for the exhaust is much larger in Trevor's flight than in the 2016 video. One of Shaw Bear 1000's commenters stated that it looked like a Continental A65-1708F engine. So Trevor, which of these two engines was installed in the plane when you bought it? Or did you buy it without an engine? And why does the aircraft's registration list a Lycoming 0-145B series engine when it is clearly not even the same brand? Here's the pitot tube. That had me confused for a while. That looks like the pitot tube has been separated inside the plane. How did you get your airspeed? Here's what the door handle looks like when it's in the closed position. There's the door handle. It looks like it's in the vertical position, which probably means it was unlatched. Did you take off with your door open? Here's the left hand boarding step. What happened to the left hand side boarding step? doesn't appear to be there. How did you get into the plane? Did you break anything stepping on the struts? Here's the fuel gauge. Looks like you've got plenty of fuel. If you were out of fuel, the top of that rod would be flush with the gas cap. This looks like a communications headset from the previous owner. What was your headset plugged into? I don't see any dangling cords here. It looks like it's tucked neatly into your parachute strap. And there's the radio antenna. So the plane has a radio antenna. How did you call for help? I found your missing water bottle. 
It wasn't in the back of the plane. It was on the seat right next to you. There's the bottle top. Looks like it's sealed to me. The front of the label looks an awful lot like Crystal Geyser labels. Oh look! There's the BPA free logo on the side of the label, just like on the gallon jug of Crystal Geyser that I bought yesterday. This shot looks just like that square bottle too. There it is again!